Dear friend, what you are about to hear is a verse-by-verse commentary on Psalm 91, one of the most powerful psalms that you can pray and declare over your family. As you listen, I want you to be mindful of how in the psalm we witness the many layers of God's protection, guidance, and deliverance for those who place their trust in Him. And that's the key theme throughout this psalm. Put your trust in God. Seek God. Seek His presence. And most importantly, seek to dwell in His presence. And I love this psalm because it constantly assures us that God's sheltering care is available for those who choose to dwell in His presence, leading to a life marked by peace, security, and intimacy with the Almighty. Psalm 91, verse 1. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. This verse opens with a declaration of the benefits of dwelling in the presence of God. To dwell in the secret place of the Most High signifies a close and intimate relationship with God. Such a person is promised protection and security, being sheltered under the shadow of the Almighty, which speaks of God's watchful and encompassing care. Verse 2, I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in Him I will trust. The psalmist expresses personal trust in God as a refuge and fortress. By vocalizing this trust, the psalmist reaffirms their reliance on God's protection and strength. This verse encourages us to openly declare our confidence in God, acknowledging Him as our reliable source of security. Verse 3, Surely He shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. The psalmist speaks of God's deliverance from various dangers. The snare of the fowler symbolizes traps set by the enemy, and the perilous pestilence refers to deadly diseases. The verse emphasizes God's ability to rescue his people from both physical and spiritual threats. Verse 4, He shall cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. This verse employs metaphoric language to illustrate God's protection. Just as a bird shields its young under its wings, God provides shelter and refuge. His truth represents His faithful promises acting as a protective shield against harm. Verse 5. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day. The psalmist assures that those who trust in God need not fear any form of danger, whether it's the unknown terrors of the night or the threats faced during the day. This verse underscores the peace that comes from trusting in God's security. Verse 6 nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. Continuing the theme of fearlessness, the verse assures that even in times of sickness, pestilence, or destruction, those who abide in God's shelter need not be afraid. The assurance extends to all moments, whether day or night. Verse 7. A thousand may fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. This verse emphasizes the contrast between the fate of the wicked and the safety of those who put their trust in God. 
The imagery of thousands falling is a vivid depiction of adversity, yet the promise remains that those who rely on God will remain untouched by these troubles. Verse 8. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked. In this verse, the psalmist speaks of witnessing the consequences that befall the wicked. The righteous will observe the justice of God being enacted upon those who oppose him. Verse 9. Because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the Most High, your dwelling place. This verse echoes the sentiments of the beginning, highlighting the choice to make God one's refuge and dwelling place. The result of this choice is a continued experience of God's protection. Verse 10. No evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. The psalmist reassures that those who choose God as their refuge are shielded from evil and harm. The promise extends to protection from any form of disaster or calamity. Verse 11, for he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. This verse introduces the role of angels as guardians. Angels are appointed to watch over and protect God's people in all aspects of life, ensuring their safety as they navigate life's paths. Verse 12. In their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. Continuing the theme of angelic protection, this verse assures that God's angels will prevent even minor harm, depicted here as not allowing a person to stumble over a stone. Verse 13. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent you shall trample underfoot. This verse uses vivid imagery to illustrate God's empowerment of his people over dangerous creatures. It symbolizes victory over both physical and spiritual adversaries. Verse 14. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. God responds to those who love him and know his name. This verse emphasizes the relationship between love for God and the assurance of his protection and exaltation. Verse 15. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. God promises to be attentive to the prayers of those who call upon him. He assures his presence during times of trouble, delivering and honoring those who trust in him. Verse 16. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. The psalm concludes with a promise of a long and fulfilling life for those who remain in God's protection. It's a final declaration of God's desire to provide both physical well-being and spiritual salvation to those who trust in Him. Father, I confess and I believe your word. The word that says in Psalm 91, verse 10, No evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you, to keep you in all your ways. God, your word is true and everlasting. I stand in faith on this scripture. Psalm 91, verse 10, No evil will befall me or my family. No plague will come near my dwelling or my body in Jesus' name. 
And even though my eyes may not be able to see it right now, Lord, I believe your word. I believe that you have sent your angels to have charge over me, to surround me and my family. You are a God who neither sleeps nor slumbers. You are a mighty and powerful Savior. And so, Lord, I trust that you will deliver me from all of my burdens and all of my frustrations. Lord Jesus, you are ever faithful. You are my hiding place. It's at this present time I have asked for your protection and for your covering over my life. I have asked for you to cover my family and my loved ones, even at this time where there is uncertainty in this world. Even at this moment where there is a lot of fear and unsettling things. I pray that you would cover us in your shadow. Lord, I believe that you are a God who is still in control, despite what comes my way. You are a God who knows the beginning and the end. I believe that you are a God who provides shelter to your children. You are he who was, who is, and who will forever be. And although I do not know what tomorrow may hold, I do know that your word says in Psalm 37 verse 25, that I have never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his descendants begging bread. Lord, your word in Jeremiah 17 verse 7 says, Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, and whose hope is the Lord. For he shall be like a tree planted by the waters, which spreads out its roots by the river, and will not fear when heat comes, but its leaf will be green. And so I declare that my trust is in the Lord. I am like a tree planted by the waters, and I am rooted in Jesus Christ. Father, all the honor belongs to you. And I'm praying at this time because, well, Lord, I need you. I need your protection. I need it each and every day. Lord, I need your favor and your mercy. I need them daily. So, Lord, I will seek you and I'll look for direction in you. I will seek you and look for your presence to always be near me always around me. I will look to you, Father, for all of my needs. So I pray that you cover me, Lord. I pray that you cover me each and every day. Thank you for hearing this prayer, Father. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. What do you do when you come to face the enemy called uncertainty? What do you do when you don't know? When you don't know what the doctor will say? When you don't know if your family members will ever forgive each other? Will my marriage survive this? What do you do when you don't know? I want to encourage you to trust in the God who does know. Trust in the Almighty, because what is unknown to us is known to Him. What is uncertain to us is already certain to him, meaning he knows all, he orchestrates it all, he's planned it all so that everything will work out for your good in the end. Psalm chapter 91 verse 14 to 15 says, Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. I encourage you to speak the word of God over your life at this moment and declare, the watchful eye of my Lord Jesus Christ is upon me. Speak and declare that the hand of the Almighty God the creator of the heavens and the earth 
is over my life. Dear friend, when you face uncertainty, begin to speak and declare that I will not be destroyed because God is watching over me. The Lord will be the one to guide me. He will be the one to lift me up when I fall. My God is faithful to preserve me during times of uncertainty. Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 7 and 8, the Bible reads, Blessed with spiritual security is the man who believes and trusts in and relies on the Lord, and whose hope and confident expectation is the Lord. For he will be nourished like a tree planted by the waters that spreads out its roots by the river and will not fear the heat when it comes, but its leaves will be green and moist, and it will not be anxious and concerned in the year of drought, nor stop bearing fruit. To fully trust in God, we have to relinquish full control. To put it another way, it's to abandon trust in yourself or in another human. You stop trying to fix it yourself, and you follow God. You yield to God. You surrender all control to Him. When you have faith, you lean on God. In the same way that a child will place their trust in a parent, that's the type of faith that pleases the Lord. Faith that looks to God for protection, faith that looks to God for provision. And so, dear friend, I speak this blessing over your life. May the light of Jesus Christ surround you. May his love overwhelm you. May his power protect you. Wherever you are, may God's presence be found. May you be guarded by his presence. Now let us pray. Lord Jesus, you are a holy God. You are a righteous God. You alone are the one who moves mountains and causes walls to fall. We know that regardless of everything happening around us, regardless of the things going on in this world, you are still in control. You are still on your throne. And you are still a good God, one who will never leave us nor forsake us. Psalm chapter 94 verse 19 says, When anxiety was great within me, your consolation brought me joy. In the middle of any uncertain circumstances, you are still a God who makes a way where there seems to be no way. When we are surrounded by the enemy, you are a God who delivers. Should we find ourselves in a multitude of problems we will call on the name that is above every other name, and that name is Jesus Christ. We trust in you, Lord, to make a way where there seems to be no way. We ask you, Lord Jesus, to split the sea of uncertainty and speak the words, peace, be still, during the storm that we face. We trust in you to be the solution we trust you to be the chain breaker, to be the way out for whatever it is that comes against us. As I pray in agreement with everyone listening, I pray that you give us the strength to stand and to stand strong and to stand an unwavering faith. Be with us as we walk by faith and not by sight. Give us the strength to hold on to the one and only Savior, Jesus Christ. You alone are our rock and refuge, so we run to you. I pray for anyone who may be listening right now, and they are uncertain about what to do next, where to go, or how to handle what's in front of them. May you give them wisdom and clarity of mind. Your word says in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 33, For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all the churches 
of the saints. Lord, we stand and believe on your word. We come against any confusion in our lives in Jesus' name. For the one who may be listening and is afraid about what tomorrow holds for themselves and their family, I pray that they may know your word, which says in Isaiah chapter 43, verse 1, But now, thus says the Lord, who created you, O Jacob, and he who formed you, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name. You are mine. May we come to know this truth, that we are redeemed and called by you, and you are a just God who holds tomorrow in your hands. For the one who may be listening and is battling with uncertainty and a troubled mind, I pray that they may know your word, which says in Colossians chapter 3, verse 15, and let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in one body, and be thankful. I speak this word into the lives of each and every single person listening. May the peace of Christ rule our hearts. I thank you for hearing our prayer. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, amen. Thank you.